I, oh my God. Yeah. Well, Charlotte, yeah, I could only wait five minutes and I'm out. Well, please go if you have to go. <laughs> Never wait for me. It doesn't matter. I couldn't get the camera on. Couldn't get the internet on. Couldn't get the camera on. It's ridiculous sometimes. Block, 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 y'all. How is everybody? I'm trying to get this right. I've got so much junk in the background here. There, how is everyone? Where is everybody? There you are. <laughs> you guys make me laugh. Poor Charlotte. She's like, I can only wait five minutes. Okay, peace out, sister. Peace out. Um, okay, I'm waiting for everybody to come on. Where is everybody? There you are. Hi. W, I don't know what that means. But anyway, I'm like, what does that mean? Hi, Matrix. Oh, my God. Hi, you guys. Hi, hi. I look so tired because I just woke up. I got in the door, fell sound asleep. I had court this morning. And um, <clears throat> so, and then I went to visit little baby Cade and take him as present. And then I went to visit John and then I drove home and now I'm exhausted. Well, no, I slept. Now I'm awake. Yeah, they're my shades to cover my head because my hair doesn't go right. I could put a bow on my head, but like I'm almost 60. So that would look kind of ridiculous, right? Look, I'm still trying to get, get this. All right, y'all. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah, this is my fit. I don't even know what color this is. I grabbed it out of my bag. My brows are my brows. They're my brows. Y'all love the brows. This is my face. We don't do anything to my face. We put makeup on it. That's it. See, look. Look at wrinkles. Bags, y'all. Okay. Um, let's see. My readers are on my head. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I know. I know. It doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, I'm wearing pink lipstick because it cheers me up today. So I was sound asleep, y'all. Sound asleep. Super duper sleepy. Oh my God. How is everybody? Mm-hmm. Mm. That's so great. Okay, y'all. You can't believe what happened. I'm gonna go right into it. So, y'all, the yeah, rat smell. Yeah, well, there's no rat in here right now. But you can't believe what happened. So as you guys know, I hope I can ran randomly see you at Costco. Yeah, well, it depends. You wouldn't recognize me. I don't think you would recognize me because I'm wearing a hoodie and all of that. Yeah, no, that is my age. I was born in 66, so I will be 58, which is almost 60. It's closer to 60 than 50. So, yeah. But you know what? Here's the thing. While everybody was out drinking, smoking, drugging, I didn't do that. Um, when everybody was staying up late, I didn't do that. When they were eating whatever they wanted, I never did that. So I didn't do any of that. And again, we all look like our family. So I did spray ammonia, but there's nothing in there. Um, I mean, there's no rat. My car is still not there. Uh, did you think you'll go ever go back to platinum? Am I not at platinum right now? <laughs> mm. Okay, so y'all, 67, there you go. We're the same age. Oh, I look over 20. Uh, 66, there you go, Eve, yeah. So it means you are. I did the opposite of what everyone did. When they ate pasta, I stopped eating that 30 years ago. When they ate meat, I stopped eating that 30 years ago. When people drank with every meal, I didn't do that since I got pregnant with Jason. When people, you know, wine, 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 you think that's good for you? It's not good for you. Um, yeah. And I don't touch my face with anything, which I tell you ad nauseum. And I, there you go. Born in 64, 66, 33. I'm assuming you're 33, not born in 1933. Yeah. Stopped eating fries. And I didn't do what I wanted to do when all these people were out doing that. Like I wasn't going down and having cocktails with people and shit like that. Mm, no, wasn't going to do that. I exercise every day and I sleep. I just slept right now for like two hours when I got home. So there you go. 1967, Leo. There you go. And my cheekbones are my, I look like my mother. But here's the problem with, with our society. I've got to open this door. It's shut the door, open the door, shut the door. Menopause. 
Okay, y'all. Um, anyway, the problem with our society, right? You know what the problem is? That when people are born naturally looking a certain way, we're attacked by the public. Hi, Katrina. We're attacked by the public because people don't believe that we look the way we do naturally. Because... You think when you have surgery, you look good. You don't look good when you have surgery, not up close in person. You know what I'm saying? And they get everyone to poof their face out and inject themselves and this, that, and the other. And what is that? Pisces 67. Yes. Oh my God. It's terrible. Like I'm fat here in California. <laughs> I like when I come back into uh, California, when I leave California and go to I'll go on other plane rides, like I'm normal looking. I come to California. I'm always like an Aquarius in 82. I'm always like, you know, he no, I'm serious. I, I'm dead serious. Like I've always been called heavy in California. No one says, oh, you're thin. Oh, you look thin. I can't even imagine if you're like 15 pounds overweight, which I've been like 40 pounds overweight, but people are just like, oh, you're, I mean, I got called, I got called all kinds of things. Okay. No, I will never strip one last time. <laughs> But I got called all kinds of things to the literally. So I can't even imagine if you were technically quote overweight. No, it's true. It's true. Women are complete bitches. Virgo, and I think you said 68. Um, yeah, Generation X, 73 Capricorn. Woo woo, Pisces and 65. Yeah, I know. It's weird, right? No surgery. I don't do Botox. Look at, I missed penciling that in. I don't do Botox. None of that shit. Because I'm not saying I won't do it. And I'm not saying I won't get a facelift. And I'm not saying any of that. But I don't even do lasers on my face. I don't even use skincare on my face. To tell you the truth. I don't do anything. I cannot be bothered. So they tell us to do a lot of stuff in the beauty business. To make us feel inferior. And then you have the Kardashians out there. Who do were born average looking. Very average looking. Nothing special. Nothing not special. Just like six out of tens, if you want to judge it that way, which is stupid. But they were average looking. And then they go get plastic surgery and we're supposed to think we want to look like that. I don't want to look like that. I want to look like my family. If you want to lose 70 pounds, Vanessa, walk every day. Swear to God. Walk, 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 walk. And cut out 200 calories a day of whatever you're eating. And drink three. This is really hard. This is 34 ounces. I drink three of these a day. It's super hard. Um, super hard. Yeah, the, the Kardashians are not good looking people. Um, I mean, they appear good looking, but what do they look like in person and they don't look like themselves. So I'm not going to apologize for looking like this, especially now when I was and cut out sugar. That's a good point. Purple Dove 7. Sugar is terrible. Like sugar is the worst. I love sugar. We know this, but, um, it's, uh, Keep moving, keep exercise, and I've never watched, me neither, I have never watched the Kardashians. I see their faces, and meaning they are pushed, we are supposed to think they're attractive. We're supposed, like uh, Chrissy Teigen's husband was on the cover of People as the best looking man of the year. Wh on what planet is that guy good looking? Is it John Legend? Yeah, on what planet is that guy good looking? I'm just asking, I, are you tall dude? Are you attractive? Do you have bone structure? I mean, if we're going to say attractive means anything, then that's okay. But that's not what they say. They make you feel like you're ugly. And I bet most of you look better than they do in real life. You just don't think you do because you're told that you don't. Okay. You're told you don't. But no, he's not the best looking. And no offense to him. He just looks like his family. But what are we doing? Like, I mean, like, why would you put that guy on the cover of a magazine and let him think that way? Because what they're doing is it's inversion for people that are born attractive and men that are born good looking. They're made to feel ugly. They're made to feel like they need to inject with steroids. Okay. They're made to feel like that. They're made to feel like they're, it's manorexia in the gyms. All the little kids are taking steroids. And the good-looking people on this planet are made to feel inferior, ugly, and horrible by our media to make money off us so we can be like them. So we can look like them. I don't want to look like your dumbass, their dumbass. So, you know, no, I don't. 72, my first child on his birthday. 
Yes, the insecurity, but why wouldn't you be insecure when they keep telling you your shit? I'm now reaching almost 60. I can now see myself clearly. As a 20-year-old, I was fucked up, fucked up because I was constantly told the opposite of whatever, okay? Like if I was pale white, I was told you need to tan. If I tanned, you ruin your skin. If I weighed, which I weighed 130 all through my 20s, 30s, I mean, except for pregnant. So I was always told you're heavy, you're Rubenesque, you're, you're Zoftic. How the fuck am I Zoftic if I weigh 130 at 5'6"? Who says that? That was their polite way of calling me fat. Now they call you thick. Don't call people thick. Although my friend says thick is good if it's in the right spot, but she's younger. So <laughs> she's Keithy's age, one of my friends. No, it's really, I was fucked up for years, embarrassed of the way I looked because I was constantly told this, that, and the other. But my face can look like a magazine, but they won't give it to you because you will not go along with what they do. If you're attractive, Okay, I still weigh 130 right now. But if you're attractive, it's very hard to love yourself regardless. How can you wake up in the morning, look at yourself, and realize that you won't earn money, you won't go get the job you want, you won't get the man you want, you won't have good-looking kids, and it goes on and on and on and on like these fucking people. And yet when you look at these fucking people, what do they really have? Exactly. No, I'm not talking about me. I'm saying everybody. What person? It causes eating disorders. It causes everything. Yeah, Vanessa, don't date a guy that, if a guy dates you and comments on your weight, then, you know, yeah, Ozempic, you know, I, I don't know what to say to that. It seems to be, I'm 5'6". Um, it seems to be um, not doing well. I assume it's for people with diabetes, and I understand that you want to lose weight because we all did. You know, I get that. Um, yes, yeah, some people are so poor, all they have is money. You're right about that. Yeah, no, it's really weird. We're just insulted from the time we're born all the way by the media. And I'm not even, I'm not saying you should fall for it, but try being a kid in high school when you are attractive and they tell you you're not attractive because you don't look like whatever the thing is on TV. Okay, it's like in my generation, if you look like a Kardashian, that would have been good. Cher was in looking then. You know what I mean? Like Twiggy, Cher, all of that. If you look like a Kardashian then, they set the trend with these idiots and put them out there. Dexatrim. Oh my God. Remember Dexatrim? <laughs> Dexatrim. Yes, it's terrible. It's just terrible. See, they called me voluptuous. I'm not voluptuous. I've never been voluptuous. They make all kinds of words. I don't need them telling me what I am. Do you see what I'm saying? So five foot five and 20 years old there. I mean, did you say five foot five and 20? Oh my God. Um, let's see. I can't look at them in the eyes without wanting to throw up. You're funny. Accutrim. Yes. Sweating to the oldies. I have a friend that modeled for Richard Simmons sweating to the oldies. She was a model for him and she's darling. She's one of my good friends. Hmm. She was heavier and she struggled her whole life, okay? But she was pretty and a model at the same time. So you see, they fuck with you. Dexatrim, oh my God, slim fast. Ugh. Yeah, so I'm a hobbit. I love myself. <laughs> I'm a troll. Yeah, Kate Moss. I mean, if you look at Kate Moss, Fen Fen, I took the Fen Fen. I took the Fen Fen after Keith and I do have a leaking heart valve. So I'm not disciplined. I do what you should do. That's not discipline. Five six, but not one thirty. Yeah, I'm not disciplined. I mean, let me let me just word that a different way. In order to refrain from bitch slapping people all day long, I have to exercise. So I realize that exercise is better than any drug. Slim fast, yeah. Um, so that's I don't I know Dexatrim, right? Thank you for that. Okay, let's get into the let's see. I hate when people tell me I have a pretty face though. Yeah, okay, thank you. Fuck off with that. But you have such I got told the same thing, but you have such a pretty face, like my body is hell. I look back and I'm like, you fucking it's women and men that wish they look like you, and they're usually they look like pug dogs. No offense to them, but um yeah, let's see. They and they're the ones that tell you you look like shit. Like the agents and managers, the ugly people. And they're 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 handling these gorgeous creatures. And even when you look at some of them, um, 
like even Linda Evangelista, didn't she go and do that? One three sixteen. Who is dying from Fent? Who is dying? Probably me. I have a leaky heart from that, or at least they said I had a, a heart valve leak or something. Um, Adkins protein shakes. I remember that. People tell me to eat a cheeseburger, like go get a salad. <laughs> Fuck right. Um, yeah, Linda Evangelista, but her face, I mean, when you look at her, she's slightly younger than me, I think 53 or 4. And I wouldn't trade spots with her, even though she was a photographed person. So all the point is, all of our looks will go away. And we, hi, we, and we look like, uh, I was told if I lose some weight, I would be beautiful. No, you're beautiful now, whether you lose weight or not. Um, but it's hard to live on this planet. Like I, I just, wow. I just, yeah, no. Yes. I remember the AIDS diet. Yes. Those chews. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I, I, I had a, um, I guess a trip to the hospital on mushrooms because my friend put his mushroom chocolates into the AIDS diet chocolate box, but he was hiding chocolate mushrooms if that makes sense anyway i thought they were the diet chocolates and you know what happened next i ate them several of them half the box had to go to the hospital that's what happened <laughs> yeah exactly i mean it was an accident i thought a fedrin yeah a fredrin i can't i thought it was yeah beverly said yeah they're all, of course they're all on coke you're not going to say that as women. How do you not know how your body works? And I know shrooms. I had a nervous. I will never. It was an accident. I thought I was eating diet chocolate. Um, <laughs> I looked at my friend. He comes down. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, I'm eating the chocolate. Like it's diet. And he's like, you just ate mushrooms. I'm like, oh, fuck. So, yeah, that I don't remember those shakes. Anyway, uh, I don't know. You can overdose. Oh, my God. Yes, I said I went to the hospital. <laughs> At all. I was like, I was like, ooh, diet chocolate. Yeah, herbal life. You know, some of my friends still take herbal life and think that it works. Yeah, I thought it was diet chocolate. Now I know there is really no such thing as diet chocolate. Okay, I'm gonna go to the Memphis Street. Let me tell you, let me tell you, you guys. Okay, so now my eyes twitching again. So I tried to do black beauties. I remember those, of course. Um so <laughs> black beauties I remember and they used to snort them and blah 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 I can't even yeah I I did all better than I think I, I think it works yeah I did that okay so white crosses black beauties yes um exactly my brother wait what did your brother I missed that okay so anyway the uh yeah chocolate before the period of course I would eat cake whipped cream yellow jackets I remember all that Purple microdot, all of that, which was LSD. Um, also, trip to the police station, trip to the hospital. But anyway, not the point. Babbling out of my mind, locked into a room in a straitjacket. You know, the whole thing. Uh, <laughs> roller skating down the street, high on LSD. Yeah. Till three o'clock in the morning, through the middle of the street. With my friend, with my friend from private school, she was just as bad. Icing off the cake. Anyway, um... <laughs> Listen, so I'm doing the Memphis Three. Yes, purple micro dots. You remember that? One time I left my pants in a dry clean in a dry cleaner. I thought I wet my I was in a van full of people partying, and I thought that I wet my pants. In my mind, I wet my pants. So I'm like, where's the laundromat? So we pulled into the laundromat parking lot and I put my pants in the dryer, thinking that I wet the 80s, right? Put my pants in the dryer. <laughs> And we're in the van and we're high as a fucking kite. So in Canada, you wear those long coats in your boots because it's freezing. But I had no pants on. I had just my underwear. So they're like, let's go to a party. And I'm like, yeah, let's go to a party. So I get to the party. Who does not have their pants while they take their coat off as at the party? Yeah, this is when I was a teenager, of course. Uh, 14, 15. I don't think I was over 15. Anyway, yeah. So all night... I kept getting rides back to the laundromat and couldn't remember which one it was and where it was and where the fuck my pants were. <laughs> so I was like, where the hell are my pants? And it's true. Um, yeah, been there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I wet my pants. And they're like, you didn't even wet your pants. You just wanted to warm your pants up. 
<laughs> no, no one gave me pants. I was at a random person's party in downtown Toronto in a high rise. So yeah, I told my friends that you don't know heart attacks from snorting. <laughs> It's so not funny, but it was funny. I was like, where the fuck are my pants? So the next day I got captured. Well, no, maybe like four or five days later, I got captured and put into a receiving home. That's a home where you wait before you go into court. And um, then I found out I had mono from all of that. Anyway, I, it was a while before I could go to, I, I slept. I just kept sleeping. So... Yeah, I had no fucking idea where my pants were. They were in a different city, like 30 minutes away. Yes, angel dust. Everybody was smoking that shit. I didn't do that to my knowledge. But who knows? I was crazy. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> I had no pants. All right, back to the West Memphis 3. Okay, captured. Captured by the police. I was missing runaway and truant, so I got captured. I called it getting captured when they captured me. And then I emancipated myself at 15 from my family legally in court. And then I got a work permit so I could work and I could work in the strip clubs. I just had to wear this thing where um, if they came in, I said, you know, I mean, it, it, I was court men. I could work because I had to support myself. I became, um, yeah, I was a runaway at 13, 13 turning 14 and uh, emancipated at 15 and had a work permit in Toronto. I just could not drink in the clubs, but I was allowed to work in them because I had to pay my own bills. So I did that. Um, there's that. And where the fuck are my pants? Yeah, <laughs> I still don't know where those pants went. Okay, West Memphis 3 always thought it was the stepdad. Now, here's what's interesting. So I always thought it was the stepdad too. Until I picked up on the energy of it. I don't think it's the stepdad. I'm not saying the stepdad didn't do other shit. So when I looked it up, the stepdad... Okay, the stepdad and the, um, because so many people emailed me and they're like, I can't believe, I can't believe you think it's the three that went to jail. Well, I do. Okay. I didn't before. I always thought it's a stepdad because I always think it's a stepdad, right? Like who else is going to kill someone but your fucking family, right? However, when you look at the, um, when they talk about the shoelaces that the three little, yeah, no, Damien is not innocent. That's exactly correct, Carmen. He is not. Oh my God, no way. Not what I was told. No way, no way, no way. Um, a veget because of Fen Fen, Cindy, I'm sorry. Yeah, the Fen Fen was terrible. I kind of lost my mind after I took Fen Fen. Um, but here's the thing with Terry Hobbs. I'm not saying Terry Hobbs wasn't a pervert who molested his kid, fucked other men, because he did that. I got that very clear. Beat his kids, weird sexually, all of that. However, when they're talking about the DNA they found on the shoelace, Yes, there was a girl involved. I got that very clear. Um, when they're talking about the shoelace, okay? First of all, the shoes in your kid's home are going to have everybody from school, every parent of every house, of everyone that ever tied a shoe. Secondly, they don't know whose shoe lace was used to shoot, to tie which kid. Because the shoelaces, how the fuck do you know which one went to which shoe? And all of that, right? You don't know. So you have no idea. And secondly, the shoelace was matched for the DNA with a partial match to three people in the family, but not a full match. They couldn't rule it out is what the thing was. See, they used semantics to fuck with people. And they did, they threw Terry Hobbs out as a um, um, distraction, okay? As a distraction, um, but let me tell you what happened. This is fucking weird. So I filmed that dumb video 10 times, 10 times, and I got to bring the microphone out. And I wrote a disclaimer at the front saying, 10 times I tried it. It's not the way I want it to be, but I'm putting it out there. And Jesse Miss Kelly's birthday is July 10th, not June 10th. But I said June 10th. I said June 10th by accident after the 15th time. And I just, it came out of my mouth. Somebody's like, um, Sloan, I'm sorry, June 10th isn't a cancer. Jeez, I don't know that as a professional astrologer, you stupid bitch. Anyway, I just say, why don't you read the disclaimer? I'm allowed to make things. Yes, I got that. I got that telling on the parents. Yeah, I mean, I'm allowed to make a mistake, right? And I had to get it up there. I could not film it again. So on Saturday, I was 
filming. Yeah, no, thanks for reminding me, bitch. Like, I'm not an astrologer. I'm saying he's Cancer Sun, uh, I think it was Sun Mercury, no, Sun, Moon, and Mercury, or whatever. I can't remember. I know they want you to be perfect. I'm me, and this is the most unprofessional production on YouTube. So just fucking deal with it and shut the fuck up. You know what that is? That's a na 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 boo boo. I want to get you because I don't like you, <laughs> you five year old bitch. Anyway, uh, so I do the video and I have to go to little Caden's first birthday party. So I finish filming the video. I turn my phone off so nobody interrupts me. And I'm on my way out the door. So I finished the video at like 12.20 and I got to be over to the birthday party at like 1. So 1, 1 1.30, whatever. So I got to stop and get gas and do this. So I put my headphones on and I'm talking to John on the phone. I'm like, I finally did that fucking video, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, blah, 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 blah. And so I'm telling him what I got because I will tell him what I got. And I'm putting on my makeup, more makeup, a lot of makeup and switching my top and I'm going out the door, right? So I have a case where, and I don't have it out here, where it's a makeup case where I put my headphones, okay? Like I put my, my headphones in there because I have like three, four cases of headphones for when I'm working. So I put my headphones in there and I, so I finished talking to John. I go, I'll call you from the gas station. Put the headphones in the bag. I put it in my purse. I go in the car. Keep in mind, it's a rental car. Now, this is a spiritual attack, I'm going to tell you. So I'm at the gas station, and I pull out the headphones, talking to John again, and I'm like, oh, shit, it's going dead. Let me switch. So I open. I just had pulled them out. I open to grab a freshly charged pair, and guess what happens? Guess what fucking happens? Happy birthday, last July, Rita Mills. Yay, 60. Whoop, whoop. So guess what happens? No, not a rat, thank God, because th that would freak me out. A cockroach, spiritual attack. After I finish that video, the thing jumps out. I'm screaming, ah! Like this, and John's like, what, what? And I'm like, a cockroach, a cockroach! <laughs> so I'm out of the car at the gas station. I'm throwing my headphones everywhere, and I'm like, oh my God. Anyway, yeah, no, that's a spiritual attack that's a spiritual attack. That's what they do. They completely send shit after you. No, that's weird. I don't have cockroaches. I definitely didn't have them in my purse. Let's be serious. Um, I dump my purse out every night. I carry my stuff in plastic bags. I would have seen them. Um, yeah, no, it came out. No, I haven't gotten the spiders yet, but spiders as well. Before Keith died, I got chased by rats, chased by rattlesnakes, bitten by wasps. That's a spiritual attack, okay, when they do that. So they were coming after me again, right? Yes, the bugs. Yes, and the rats. I think the rat was P. Diddy. We figured out maybe the cockroach. Yes, no, it was in the car. Then this is a rental car, and I'm like, where the fuck did the cockroach go? So I'm looking under the seats. I'm like, where is this fucking cockroach? And <laughs> I'm freaking out. Yes, right after I did this. But I will tell you something. I don't think it, 65 on November 23rd, amazing. I do not think that um, Terry Hobbs is the killer. Now, I'm going to say this because in the video, and, I, and, I, and the film would go missing. The thing, yes, the rat after Keith died, right? In the, with, the, with its legs cut off like Keith. So anyway, when I did the video, I literally saw, like, like, I'm telling, okay? And I actually got confused between Christopher Beyer and Stevie Branch. It might actually have been Stevie Branch who was saying that. I have to do another video on it. I also feel that they were lured there at that time. And I'm going to say this. I literally put on headphones and I was listening to Jesse Miss Kelly, okay? And... I wanted to listen to what he said. So I wanted to hear the tone of his voice. I seriously did. So he does get things wrong. He gets the wrong time. He gets, you know, whatever. And they use that as a way out. Do you understand that? They, they speak in semantics in order to distract your attention over here. Jesse Miss Kelly has never recanted the fact that he did it. He has 11 times said that he did it. Who is going to say that even when they get out of prison? I'm just asking you to really think logically why that would be said 
by him. And they called him the the low IQ one, which I don't believe either. So just ask yourself, what what got it for me was the tone of his voice, period. The tone of his voice. Also keep in mind when Hollywood does, yeah, they said he has an IQ of 70. That's not true. Who's making, who confusion is, confusion is a lie, okay? Understand confusion is a lie. A psychopath is not going to say that. He's the one that turned them in, and I really believe Damien had something to do with it. I really fucking believe Damien had something to do with it. I am not sitting there going, oh my God, he's so great, all right? I, no, no, no. And I am I wasn't there, and there is confusion. A narcissist, but are you really going to say you killed three little boys? He does not... He does not go in public with them. He does not um, ask for money from people. He stepped away from it. He did all of those things. If it's not, yeah, there was a girl there. I'm not sure they all participated in the full, full fledged way, you know, like that. And I do feel people in the town knew, and I feel people saw what was going on. The guy that hit, the guy that they call Mr. Bojangles, seemed to have some kind of speech impediment. That's what I got. Um, he had some kind of a speech impediment and the speech impediment was what led him to run away. He had like a speech impediment, okay? Um, I noticed that they wrote that all three, yes, exactly. I, I read that all three, Jesse Miss Kelly, Jason Baldwin and Damian Eccles, all three are listed on the movie, whatever movie, Paradise movie, whatever that was, as producers and actors in it, okay? They're both. Yeah, the Bo, the Bojangles guy, the guy that ran into the gas station with blood and mud all over him, and then he left. I mean, they called the police, and the police were idiots. Truthfully, the police, they're going to put people in positions of power that are going to cause chaos and fuck up, okay? Even, even in, and not the same thing at all, but even in the, in the, um... Body cam I watched of my son on the ground. There are two people walking all over my kid, where he died, his motorcycle, and no one asked their name. Like, they, like you've got 10 cops there, and not one of them is like, who the fuck are you? Like, why are you so nosy? Why are you sitting here like this? So I do know that it happens. And they may have other things on their mind, and they could very well be traumatized. But anyway... I just don't know what to say. The guy that they call Mr. Bojangles, the guy with the blood and he went into the restaurant. I get that he was speech impediments, hearing or speaking impaired, okay? Um, and th they got released from jail, okay, on an Alford plea. That is not innocent. What they're saying is, we have enough to charge you. We do not want to take you to trial and we can prove that you're guilty. We believe, okay? We can prove that you're guilty, but we want you to get out and you will take a deal, a plea called an Alfred plea, which does not exonerate you, but you can still plead your innocence, but it does not mean you're innocent. It does not mean you're innocent. And now the state does not have to pay for their mistake nor, and here's the key word, please pay attention to this, all of the nonsense about checking DNA, redoing DNA, la, 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 la. It cannot be done because there is no active court case. Do you understand that? If there's no active court case, they plead out of it. So any evidence to convict or exonerate them is not going to be checked because number one, they don't have to give it up. I know that. I had to file a police legal lawsuit for my son's death to get the records or I wasn't going to get them. And they still won't give me half of it. So when you look at it, so many people defend, why are you so easily defending him? Why don't you feel the energy? Why don't you use your eyes and look? Just look. So at the, the uh, Memphis Three, so they like to say it's Terry Hobbs, but the only evidence with Terry Hobbs is a partial genetic DNA match that is common amongst many and actually ties him 
to other people in the community. It just does not exonerate him off of the shoelace. And if your kid's shoelaces were tested, I'm sure that they would be uh, the West Memphis Three. I'm sure that your kid's hair would be in there and all of that, okay? So, like, you know, I'm not saying, I can see the guy having sex with other people and the kids saw them doing that. The kids watched them. Also that Mark, uh, Mark Byers, the Christopher Byers dad. Um, no, they found the hair in the shoelace and it didn't 100% match. Go back and read the autopsy. Go back and read the information. It was a partial match and I, I, it's a blockchain connection to the DNA, but one part of it, it does not confirm it's him. It says, yes, it doesn't exclude him but it doesn't confirm fully either yes but the knots okay th when you're talking about the knots ask yourself this when you're talking about the knots there are also certain sigil knots used in ritual magic so you can you know you can do it right you don't know who shoelaces were used to tie which boy and i'm going to say this again if you've had little boys, and I had little boys, eight-year-old little boys, good luck one person catching them. So who did Terry Hobbs have with him? Who was with Terry Hobbs? Terry Hobbs did not catch three eight-year-old boys. Have you tried to corral a group of little boys? I've been a little boy. Todd, you and your friends, could one stepfather catch your ass? I'm just saying, like, you know what my Jason would do? Fuck you, and he would run. And Keith would be real quiet and sneak off in the other direction. As soon as they saw one of the... Whichever kid got grabbed by Terry Hobbs, if it's Terry Hobbs, it's like herding cats, right? I mean, I couldn't... I, I Like, a, I would get nervous when I went to the water park with the girls and the boys because I couldn't keep my eye on them all, okay? Like it was, there was four parents there and I still had to keep my eyes on them because I never knew where the hell they were. They pop up behind me. I'm like, where the hell did you go? Mm -hmm. You can't catch them. You can't keep your eye on a fucking toddler, okay? <clears throat> yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm quite sure. I'm not saying Terry Hobbs is a good person. I can see him cheating on his wife. I can see him fucking guys up the ass. I can see Mark Byers doing the same thing. And Mark Byers, if any of the stepdads were going to be the ones who did it, it would be him. Do you know why? Because he used to beat his son naked in the closet. I'm talking about Christopher Byers. That dad used to fucking beat his child in the closet naked. That kid was bruised from head to toe. So if anybody killed anybody, it's going to be Mark Byers. But you see how we go to Terry Hobbs, and then Mark Byers, and everything is away from Damien. Everything is, away. yes, that's exactly, if any stepdad was going to do it, it's first going to be Mark Byers, not Terry Hobbs. Terry Hobbs is a fool, and a drug addict, and whatever, an alcoholic, and so is Mark Byers, but Mark Byers was a drug dealer, was a this, was a that, and both those boys, Stevie, Stevie, wait, Stevie Branch and Christopher Byers, both those kids were coming from abused homes, okay? Both of them. Yes, he did die in a car crash. They did. But still, I'm going to say to you, my kids, I'm telling you, as little kids, and, we, and they grew up around guns and violence, okay? Even if you go into the woods and point a gun at one boy, you can only shoot one. My kids would split in two different directions and take off. Now, that's three little boys. You're not going to catch them. You're not going to catch them. So who is saying, okay, who is saying that one person hogtied? Do you know what it takes to, first of all, you have to beat a child into quiet stillness. Then you have to hogtie them. So what? when you're hogtying child A, where is child B and C going, right? Okay, where are they going? Where, where What's happening? Where are they going? They're taking off, right? So don't believe that it's one person because it's not. And people are like, it's Terry Hobbs. I'm like, he's a fucking dick. Yes. And he should be ashamed of himself. Yes. All of these things. But was he part of it? It's not one person. Okay. It's not. His hair was on the shoelace. 
whose hair with their child is not going to be on the shoelace? My hair is on Meadow's clothes, okay? I am not raising Meadow. My hair is on Matt. Do you know how much you shed? My hair is on Paige's, Cade's clothes. Um, <clears throat> yeah, who's a bunch of followers? <laughs> yeah, I mean, just think about it logically. If you've had eight-year-old children, you know they're not going to listen to you. Boys are not going to listen to you. They're going to take off. Um, no, the I don't think the evil is going to stop. And, and understand, the way that you know that it's ritualistic or it's satanic or whatever is because of the confusion. A lie is always confusion. A lie is always confusion. The truth isn't. The truth is the truth. There is no other way for the truth. An orange is an orange. If I tell you it's a pomegranate, that confuses you, but it looks like an orange. No, it's a pomegranate. Pomegranates have seeds. That orange has seeds. That's what, it's definitely more than one person. They're trying to blame it. They're trying to blame it on one step. Yeah, it's terrible. Um, no, it's, a, please, I had boys. I Are you kidding? Jason and his two friends, I would chase down the street. <laughs> They'd split. You know, I mean, come on. I mean, come on. Come on. And now, the, and I'm right. And Jesse Miss Kelly, the other thing that he says, I'm native and I am brown. Yeah, well, you would be brown if you were native. Native. But remember, when it's chaos magic is used, that will cause confusion. That's what you have with Joe Biden. You have a combination of glamour magic and chaos magic projected on that man. It's now wearing off because of Pluto and Aquarius. There you're right. But just ask yourself, Jesse Miss Kelly, for all the mistakes he made and all of the stupidity that he said, like, oh, it was nine o'clock in the morning, it was 10 o'clock in the blah, 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 whatever. He has never once said he wasn't there. Now, if I got out, I'd be on every talk show saying I didn't do it. Jason Baldwin said he wasn't going to take the plea because he didn't want to plead to something he didn't do. But Damien was on death row. That is why he took the plea. I can tell you, if I did not murder those three little boys, I would not have taken the plea. You would have been taking my fucking ass to court and we'd go through it until the day I die because I didn't do it. Even if my friend was on death row. See, Jason Baldwin is a weaker link in that. Okay, so that's a weaker link. Confusion is distraction. It's chaos magic. Um, I feel a stepdad murdered those boys. Here we go with that again. Um, yeah, Jason Baldwin agreed to take the plea to free Damien Eccles, to free him. Do you see what I'm saying? So had it not, if it was me and he was on death row, fuck you, buddy. I'm not, I am not, I can promise you if I did not kill them, I personally, I mean, I'd want to get out of jail. Don't get me wrong. But I am not agreeing to something I didn't do under any circumstances when it comes to the rape and murder of little children. You fucking, you could take me to the death chamber and I will die innocent, but I will not do that. I will not do that. Um, that's just me. And when you see all of those people, Johnny Depp, and you see them defending but they're defending Damien. The other two are along for a ride. Yes, Miss Kelly, MK Ultra. Exactly. Exactly. But what he did say is that somebody urinated in one of the children's mouths, which means it would be in their stomach. And that was before the police had got the autopsy back. And there was urine in the stomach of two of the boys. Oh, Damien's in the club. It's obvious. I mean, it's just, it's fucking obvious. If you can't see that, I can't help you. He's in the cabal. And that's exactly, the only person not asking for money is Jesse Miss Kelly. The other people are asking for money from this, from that, to get, to give them money. Mm hmm So, what I picked up, um, what I picked up, and this is, it's in Damien's eyes to me. 
The police are off duty. Yeah. Oh, yes. The police are probably connected because with the beast system, you're going to have plants in every walk of life. The local bubblegum store because they're always looking to convert into their group. Just like, and go back to that movie with A Bronx Tale. I think the movie A, Bro a Bronx Tale where the kid, the dad is a bus driver, that fucking De Niro, you know, De Niro, <laughs> that fucking pile of shit. Anyway, that guy is, who said he'd give me a call back? I have no idea. Argon is missing. I don't know who that is. Um. Anyway, at WeHo. Wait, what are you talking about? Police department. Okay, I can't, I, now I'm confused. All right, so in the movie The Bronx Tale, the youngest son wants money because the dad makes a mediocre life because they, they, they tell us that if we're not celebrity and stars, we don't count. So we all get focused and distracted on that bullshit. I wish I'd never fallen for it. I fell for it too. So this is a movie with De Niro called The Bronx Tale. So anyway, De Niro's kid in the movie, he hooks up with the mobster to make money. So he goes to collect money from the drugs, from the gambling, whatever. That's moving him into the beast system because he wants money because he's been taught that money's important. Yes, Chaz Palminer. Yeah, that guy. He wrote that story. So yeah, he wants money, power, and respect. So he goes along. So the beast system has people everywhere. And, and so a very good question is, well, they're not really famous. So why would they sell themselves out? They sell themselves out at whatever age they are and whatever it is they want. So if you're a 10 year old boy and you just want a bicycle and you want your mom to go to Florida for Christmas, you may sell yourself out for that reason, right? So when you do that, that's, you know, maybe what you'll do. But anyway, when you're 24, you might want this, that, or other, okay? Oh, Gavin Newsom or Michelle Obama. You know, I'm going to tell you, I think it's going to be Michelle Obama, but I don't feel any of it, so I can't even go there with that. But I do, I called for Newsom's removal. Good for you, Todd. Newsom is the biggest piece of shit on planet Earth. I live in California. There are people on this. I'm telling you, there are people on the streets. There are people shooting up. There are people shitting on our streets. This is normal. Like my kids, like you drive by it. There are people, they pile themselves up outside of businesses and no one makes them accountable, but you're accountable. You know why you're accountable? Because you pay your taxes and they think they got you because they think they fucking got you, right? So yeah, it's ridiculous. Anyway, when it, yeah, you're a citizen. There you go. When you look at the West Memphis Three, I want you to think about it. There is a woman. There is another kid involved. It was ritualistic, although I believe the actual murders were conducted under the guise of a ritual. Full moon going from Libra into Scorpio. And they were found, um, they were found just the following day, 12 hours after the moon went full. Okay, so... The moon went full on May 6th at like 1.35, 45. Yeah, there's a woman involved. There is all kinds of shit that goes on with that. And understand, the person who orchestrated it and commanded that it happen, it was an ego thing for that one. It was an, e yes, they were disfigured. Yes, exactly. Now, I got into a scrap with somebody. She's like, the testicles were taken by the turtle. I'm like, really? I'm like, really, a turtle ate only one boy's testicle. So like, if I'm a wild animal, I'm just fucking saying this, and I'm in a swamp, and there's one dead body, and I go, and I'm like, wow, yummy dead body, and I'm only eating the private areas and not the other two? Just stop. That's why Christopher Byers was telling on somebody, and that's why they did what they did to him, okay? Um, so that's what, I just missed that. So that's why they did what they did, okay? People are so wild sometimes, like really, you, you plugged in, lady. Wait, I don't even know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, no, it's very, it's very disturbing. They said turtles, they never actually proved that. That is one thing, but again, 
Turtles. Okay, so show me these fucking turtles. Let me just tell you. There was a woman in Florida and she went missing jogging. So what they did is they caught the alligator and or crocodile, whatever lives in Florida, think alligator, and they opened its stomach. So if they actually thought it was a turtle, they would catch said turtle in the area because it would frequent the area and they would cut it open. But no one did that either. They just threw that out there. Chaos magic. Okay. Um, so they just, they do that just to throw it out there. And again, just because there's a hair in a shoelace from a father who ties those kids shoes, let's be serious. Okay. Let's be serious. <laughs> let's be serious. Yeah, they would have found the turtle and they would have cut the turtle. They did it in Florida and the whole fucking Everglades. Like those tur those alligators go everywhere, okay? I'm not saying it wasn't a turtle, but let's be... To there you go. Turtles are herbivores. Thank you. I mean, they would have caught it and said, let's see if we can find what's in this fucking turtle. But no. But where is this turtle at? Yeah, exactly. I found in Michael Morris' leisure. It was found. Yes, it may have been found in Michael Moore's ligature, but you don't know whose shoelace, okay? Like which kid's shoelace was used to tie which kid. So are you telling me that when they're grabbing shoelaces out of the shoes, they're going, oh, this is Michael Moore's shoelace, so let's kill him with his own shoelace? Or are they just taking shoelaces out of the shoes and tying people up because they need some kind of ligature? without matching it to the kid. I mean, that's obvious. It doesn't matter what fucking kid it went to. It's like, I, I, I can't understand. I can't. My tortoise is covering. I'm sorry. Yeah, your tortoise. DNA has proved. No, the DNA has not proved it. That's where you guys read it. It hasn't proved it. It showed it that the that his DNA was on it, but it also showed other people in the vicinity. So you can't just say that because the stepfather of somebody who died whose shoelace has his DNA on it, that that means he's the killer. I'm going to say it again. Three little boys and blame, oh sure, blame the turtle. That's what I thought. I'm like, you fucking assholes. The reason that they got Christopher Beyer in that area, okay, is because he was going to tell on somebody for sexually abusing him. And that was part of it. He also saw somebody being, having sex with the same sex. And he said, I'm telling, he jumped out right in front of me. That's what happened. So let's see, I think there's, yes, and we're not, at, oh, yes, of course there is. They both have the pedal, I, I can't. I can't. Um, I think it was sexually in dark arts motivated. Carmen, you know, and I know. Carmen and I know this. We know this. Mm -hmm. mm. When so many people yelled. I found it interesting, though, that two days after when Jesse Ms. Kelly says somebody urinated in one of the kids' mouths, two of the kids' mouths, that urine was found after that statement was made in the stomachs of the boys. Now, how do you explain that? How did he fucking know that? Ask yourself that. And that's not a psychic thing. I'm asking you a logical thing. How did Jesse Miss Kelly know two days after those boys were missing that urine was in their stomachs? He said it. It's on the tape. I had to listen to his voice. It was Johnny Depp, not Sean Penn. I had to listen to Jesse Miss Kelly's voice to actually hear what he was saying. And when I heard it, I, I went into like a grounding of truth with him. So I don't, I'm not saying he's not stupid. I'm not saying he's not dumb. I'm not saying he's not less IQ than everybody else. But I am saying he did say there was urine in the two boys' stomachs, not Christopher Byers, but... I don't know if it's Christopher Byer or Christopher Byers, but Christopher Byer, not him, but in Michael Moore and Stevie Branch, he said, I saw Damien put his wee-wee in their mouth and urinate. Those are Jesse Miss Kelly's words. Now, here's what's very interesting. 
That was two days after the boys were found. Okay, so like, and then Jesse Miss Kelly was sent into, um, you know, into uh, the police lineup. They didn't read his Miranda rights. They or they did, or they didn't tape it all, or the tape went down. The usual shit that happens when black magic is involved. So he said about the urine that came back after. Okay, after the autopsy. Now, even if they're rushing the autopsy, it's still going to take a couple of weeks. Even if they're rushing it, all right? So they said that, okay? They said, Jesse Miss Kelly said that. Here's the other thing with that, okay? West Memphis 3. If you are um, Jason Baldwin and Damian Eccles and you are all in jail for 20 years because this jackass said that shit and made it up, then why are you hanging out with him at a movie premiere? I literally would fucking have him killed if he said that about me and I didn't do it. Like, we wouldn't be done. He would be sued. His family would be sued. It wouldn't be done. I would not let go of that. You would not accuse me of that if I didn't do that. So why was he looked at by his two friends because there was a bait and switch going on. They figured Jesse would go out there and confuse the issue. That is true. He said things to confuse. And the other two never dreamed that they would go to jail for that long. Okay. Yeah, I got it in Arizona. Thank you. Yeah, I got it off this from the side stand. Um, it's really pretty. It was distractions. It's obvious to me. Also, when you look at the way it was done, it's not a one person thing. I mean, those boys, do you know, like, I'm just asking you, if you, let's say we're three people, right? We're three girls and a man's coming after us to rape us and kill us. And we're at a party. Do you think for a fucking minute, one man is going to be able to keep three adult women? They're not. They're not. Scott Peterson is guilty. I don't care what the Innocent Project said. Scott Peterson did it. Scott Peterson did it. Just stop. No one else wants a pregnant woman dead and sticks her in a drum and then takes a boat out on Christmas. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He did it. I was alive during that time. He did it. Okay, he did it. Um, yeah, I don't even know what to say about that. He took a boat out and then bought a drum and then his wife was found in a drum dead. I mean, the Innocence Project, they're just fucking, it's just blasphemy what they're doing. It's just ridiculous. Um, oh, he absolutely did it. I mean, come on, come on. I mean, please. Um, he's guilty, he's stupid, and he's stupid. And he was having an affair, absolutely. Um, but with the, uh, there, Todd and I think alike with this way, but I really want you to go back and I want you to listen to Jesse Miss Kelly on the Memphis Three. I want you to hear him talk about the urine. The other thing that he said, which really stuck, I named my son after Lacey. Oh, sweet. That's so cute. Um, imagine murdering your pregnant wife, like fucking dude, what are you doing? Anyway, the other thing that really stuck in my, that, okay, so when, as a psychic person, when you talk to me, when you talk to me, and I'm not always looking to do this, but when you talk to me, okay, and you're telling me a story, I will hear wording that is not what you're saying. So if you're telling me I went to the grocery store and I bought potato chips and then I went here, there and everywhere, I will hear something else if you're not telling me the truth, okay? I will hear something else. And so when I hear that other thing, then I start following in my mind those words, which are not your words, but they're just, it's kind of the way that that goes, right? So listen to Jesse Miss Kelly. He talks, they ask him what he did. He said, I went and I brought Michael Moore back. So Michael Moore split, okay? That kid split. And so Jesse Miss Kelly caught him. This is his words, not mine. He caught him. And so the guy who was interviewing him, I don't know if it was his lawyer or somebody that worked for the police, but they said, they said, 
they asked Jesse why he left because he said, I left, I couldn't stomach it, I threw up. So that word hit me, throw up. Um, or he said he barfed or puked or whatever, but it hit me, the word. So he said that he drank a particular whiskey that night and then he left that area, smashed the whiskey bottle, and I think it was called Evan Williams. Anyway, this guy that was interviewing him said, I, I got to go see if I can find that bottle. And they found the bottle exactly where he said. So if you think he's lying, ask yourself why he still hasn't recanted that, okay? Why has he never said, I made it up, I was high, I was crazy, I was fucked up? He has not said that, okay? Mm. So... That's all I'm thinking. That's all I'm thinking. I just don't believe it was Terry Hobbs. If it was Terry Hobbs, he may have witnessed it, but I don't even believe that. See, here's the problem. When you have families, and this excludes Michael Moore's family. Okay, I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about Stevie um, Branch's family and Christopher Byers' family. Those men in those families were doing insidious things behind the scenes to their families okay so behind the scenes so it's an energy thing it's an energy thing like attracts like so they were doing things that they had to keep secret to begin with if you do that that makes you guilty for example if there is a car accident outside of your house and you are a drug dealer you can't really hand over the tape of the car accident because it's going to also show the people that you're buying drugs from and giving drugs to. So you're going to look guilty because you can't really do that. It, yeah, interesting name, Michael Moore, but it was James Michael Moore. So he went by Michael Moore. Just, it's really interesting. And I get that there was a fourth boy there. But understand, a lot of their energy attracts them to each other. And also understand, Damien, I believe, did it for ego purposes um that's what i feel like that i believe that i also when they put this out there and i'm i i just i have such offense at this geraldo for number one all of you all that are generation xers you know that fuck geraldo anyway geraldo geraldo revere he's like so do you think it's, it's satanic panic like is it satanic panic listen geraldo you fucktard there is such a thing as ritual, and you know it. Okay, Geraldo, my eyes are twitching again. And when you're looking at the ritualistic aspect of it, they throw it at you. And what do they always say? They always say in a ultra-Christian community. Okay, again, I am Christian, period. I believe in Jews, Jesus, period. Okay, so... Do I go to church? No. Was I raised in church? No. Am I fanatical? No. Am I a Bible pusher? No. I have never read the Bible. I just know inside myself what I know. So why is it when somebody says they're a Christian, they're a crazy Christian. Those Christians. Those Christians. Why do they do that? Why? Because they want you to believe in the beast system. That's why they say it. Those people in the town weren't running around shoving Bibles down anyone's throat. Who said that? Yeah, they mock it and downplay it. Only Christians, they do this too. The Satanists, they're like, well, we're the crazy Christians thinking satanic panic. Listen, Geraldo, Geraldo Rivera. Yes, yes, Satanism does happen. And, and just on the premise, let's say nobody we know killed those three boys. They are still fucking evil. Most Christians are not Bible thumpers, okay? You're talking, if you want to know who the Bible thumpers are, they have those lunatics, smiley guy. Who's the smiley guy? What's that guy? Joel Olstein. They have the weird guy with the demon eyes. Okay, that guy. They have, you know, whoever. But if you're talking about being a God-fearing person, which I am, and I try to do right in the eyes of God as best as I can, I screw up all the time. If you were doing that, you're not a crazy Christian. You're trying to be a decent person. And why is that a problem? Why is that a problem for our society? Oh, 
you don't drink. You're a, you're stupid. You don't do drugs. You're dumb. You're repressed. You're evangelical. Um, yes, Kenneth Copeland, that guy. What is wrong with that? Who is going to that guy's church? Like what? He's like he's unhinged. Kenneth Copeland is unhinged. Have you seen that guy? Oh my god, that guy's fucking unhinged. Like unhinged. He's like some <laughs> Yes, God does offend evil. So they want to make it a thing. And here's what they said, and I can see this. Damien Eccles, oh, he liked heavy metal, motorhead, and he wore all black. Okay. So this was in 93. The kids that were teenagers in my group, and I'm the generation of the 60s, so in the 80s, and I was a teenager, they all wore black long coats. Like, we're over that, okay? Like, no one's looking at Damien Eccles like you're this. They may think he's unhinged, but it's because they know about his mental history in the mental hospital. And is Davian Eccles really mentally ill or does he have attachments to his body? And is that why he covers his eyes like this a lot of the time? Right? Right. Yeah, a trenchy. I mean, this is normal. Nobody's putting a kid in jail because he listened to that uh, now, what they do and where they are correct <clears throat> is he did follow Aleister Crowley. And in the court, he's making hand gestures. And I'm like, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? No, I'm in my, I'm almost 60. Why are you doing that? Why are you making those hand gestures in the court? And by the way, Aleister Crowley, he wasn't fucking all that. He went around telling people he was the baddest guy in the world. If you have to tell me that, you're a fucking pussy, okay? You're a bitch and a pussy. He died broke. He was a pedophile. He caused chaos everywhere he went. He died as a piece of human garbage. So if you're going to worship a human garbage, and they do like Hitler, and they die, they love Albert Fish, Madonna. I'm going to have some fish singing. Shut up, Madonna, you stupid bitch. Biatch. I mean, come on. Come on. Come on. So, I mean, please. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So, you know, Albert, Albert Fish, this is what they doing. They shove it in our faces. Yes. Yes. Crowley was broke. Albert Fish, serial killer. This is who they admire. That's why they say they're going to have some fish. Like, they fuck with us every which way around. They screw with us. And that's what they do. Yes, Barbara Bush's daddy. He did sex magic. But sex magic requires different things. Let's go to in modern day world. Here's the thing. If you, and I've... Any psychic out there knows this. I have had many a client that is going to go and they want, they will come to me and they're like, can you do a spell for me or a candle that will get me my neighbor's husband, my ex-boyfriend, he's married with a kid, but I want him back. Um, you know, my yoga teacher, he just had a baby, but he should be with me. These fucking arrogant people. And they do spells, right? No, I'm serious. So let's just look at it this way. No, because they want what they want. Do you not understand? When you are doing spells, you are the one who is greedy. What do you think, you know, um, um, what is it? The abundance book, not the abundance book. What do they call that? Um, now I've forgotten it. The secret, the book, the secret and all of that. When you, hi there, new subscriber. Thank you. When you look at the book, the secret, it's all about you and America getting what you want. We, we can co-create our own world. No, you can't. You do not get to create. That is a satanic mindset. Law of attraction. Thank you. Did you hear that squeaking? Was that coming from me? No. Okay. Um, I'm like, did you hear that? Was that me? So when you, the law of attraction, they're missing components of it because again, if you're in Ethiopia and you're fucking in a sweatshop and you can't get out of it and you're doing manifestation, are you getting out of it? No. 
Prayer works. Correct. Did you hear the squeaking? I was like, where the hell is that coming from? It's probably the cat over there. Law of fuckery. Exactly. Pray. Always pray. It's so interesting. They teach you. I don't have a dog here. Baby Jack's at the other house. They teach you. Okay. They teach you how to, oh, you can manifest. You can co-create. No, you can't co-create because there are other people in your fucking way from co-creating. Okay. You can do whatever you want. You can drive down the street and you can drive at 65 miles an hour. But if somebody slams their brakes on in front of you, you are not getting your way and going by them. You either have to stop or you have to hit them or you have to go around them. And you can't really go around them if there's someone beside you. So you cannot co-create the way you want. You cannot. You have purpose. You have certain things. You are and can do certain things in a particular way. So, yeah, no, it just, it's bullshit. I know I heard the squeaking. It's, it's such bullshit. You can't do what you want. People who give birth to children who are injured in utero are asking God to take that. Okay. Doreen Virtue may have known what's up. I mean, she went a little bit fundamentalist too. I don't necessarily agree with everything she's thinking, but um, St. John's, Newfoundland. Yeah, it is. Like you can have anything you want. I used to have people come to me and they're like, you know, I would do this. Now let's take it a little bit farther. Santeria, don't get offended. If you're a real Santeria person, I respect you. I'm not saying this, but the Santeria women I know, they go out and they do their magic, all right? And they do rituals like they cut chickens up and shit like that. And yes, I do know people who do that. And that's fine. Do whatever you want. But except for the poor chicken. Okay. So that's like pretty upsetting this old chicken. But anyway, the Santeria, these are the women that take their menstrual blood and cook for your, for your man. And bring food to feed you in order to tie you to them. And don't think that doesn't happen. I have seen it. I have heard it. I know people who did it. And when I worked with a group of psychics, yes, spirit cooking, exactly. When I worked with a group of psychics, I did not leave my tampons in the garbage at work. I kept a plastic bag, I told you this, I kept a plastic bag in my purse and put my used products into a plastic bag. I took the hair out of my comb and left it in my purse. I did not leave my purse alone in my office. I'm not saying it works. I'm saying they do it, okay? That's what I'm saying. I'm voodoo and black magic and hoodoo and adrenochrome and they use it to bind you, tie you. People do this shit, okay? They do it. Now, whether it will work or not is the whole other concept. This is where, of course, it wears off because it's manipulation of energy. And where you do have control is over binding and protecting yourself from them. So you do that in the name of Jesus, amen where nothing will come against you or your family or your doggies or your kitties or whatever. So yes, take it to your, yes, exactly. Some Italian women do that and cook with blood. Exactly. Yes, that's a ritual. And people who think they don't do it are flush it down the toilet at home. Oh God. Yeah, that clogs the toilet. But anyway, you have to wonder what's going on. The law of attraction is, and look what they do in the law of attraction. You attract what you are. Huh? Tell that to a child that grows up in a sexually abusive home with a psychopath for a parent. They attract what they are. What are you saying? What are you saying? We have to stop with that. We have to stop. Don't eat the spaghetti. I don't eat spaghetti. I haven't eaten that in years. You do not attract what you are. Some people are very good people and they attract psychos into their life the law of repulsion exactly i know it's totally victim blaming it's totally what are you saying to a three-year-old john Vaughn? wait did you ever uh i don't know i gotta i gotta go back and look i can't remember what i did you always have to pray but when they talk about it when you hear people say you can co-create your life you really can't okay you really can't because 
you have free will and everybody around you has free will. So within the context of what fated events are going to happen, sometimes you have free will and then someone dies in front of you and your free will changes. Okay, so like my son died because of the free will of other people pulling out in front of him and him reacting to that response. So like where in my life did I ask for that to happen? Where in his life did he ask for that to happen? He didn't fucking ask for that to happen. He did not ask for that to happen. So, you know, no. They're obsessed with it. They're ridiculous. Ridiculous. Exactly. So it's just, it's horrible. <laughs> the law of re-traumatization. Exactly. You have the ability to choose your response and to treat people the way you choose and you cannot control, oh, Carmen, you know this? You can't control others. You can't control others. And, and even if you are the best person on planet Earth, you can give birth to a child and somebody can come and try to hurt your child. And you, what, what, you attracted that? What, by cooking Christmas dinner and taking them to Girl Scouts, Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, ice skating, whatever? So you attracted them? Did the Memphis Three, did those families attract that? So let me get this right. On planet Earth, we have a God that murders three eight-year-old boys and then says they their energy attracted. First of all, it's not God's doing. It's the beast system, okay? And it isn't have anything to do with them. So I just don't even know what to say. I don't know what, I feel it is demonic. I feel it is. I mean, what, what did those boys do? What? They have a big happy smile on their face and ride their bikes and their skateboards like every other eight-year-old on the planet? Did they love their parents? Did they kiss their mommies? Did they go to school and throw erasers around the classroom and do all of that? You don't have a choice but to keep moving. Kids will always be attacked. That's correct. And you've got to watch with the drugs because you're, uh, yes, good souls attract damage. To, exactly. You got to watch your kids with drugs because that's why they want everybody smoking weed and drinking alcohol. They're fucking up your children by making you think it's a good thing. Understand if the government does it, they want to hurt you. That's what they want to have happen. Um, I felt, yeah, I did too. I'm not, I, I did as well. I don't, I don't believe, I don't believe in the, you can co-create. You can't, should women for the love of money or for love or money. Why would you marry for money? What, 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 like, what? Okay, first of all, marriage is a government contract. So you probably shouldn't be getting legally married through the government because then you have to ask permission. Hi, Mr. Court and Mr. Lawyer Man that I'm going to pay at least 20000 to on both sides. Can I divorce this person I don't get along with? You didn't have to ask permission to get married. Did I have to ask permission to get married? Oh, no, you let me do that. Then they put a number on you through the marriage, right? And so the marriage is then controlled by the government. And who is the government? Like, I can fucking love who I want when I want, period, okay? Period. I can choose to do what I want when I... And the reason... Just got done Costco shopping. <laughs> it's hilarious. And I can definitely choose who I'm going to live with. But what they wanted to do, this is why they villainized being single and having children and living in the same home, because they want to keep you accountable for your spouse's stuff. You know what I'm saying? So if your spouse is with you and they gamble and do all kinds of shit, then you're responsible. I'm not responsible for another grown up, period. I'm not. I'm not. And I'm not the one who's, I'm just not, I'm not, sorry. And why would you get married through the government? Now, when you get married through the government, just try to get a divorce. If anybody has an emotional problem with the divorce or kids or whatever, no, marriage is a complete sham. If you're going to spend your life with somebody, why would you not spend your life with somebody you have feelings for? I'm just going to ask that. Can't you make your own money? Why would a woman marry for money? Is she weak? Is she stupid? Did they teach you that? Oh, you a dumbass woman. You so dumb, you can't make your own money. Really? <laughs> I can make more money than a man can give me. So no. And I can keep it to myself and then I don't have to give it up. Yeah, no, why would you do that? 
marry because you love somebody and because they share similar values or they have similar hobbies or you enjoy them or just get married. There's so many. I, I, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know what to say to that. I do not know what to say to that. I don't know. I'd rather live with cats. I live with cats. I'm now a cat lady. <laughs> I'm a cat lady. <laughs> um, no, I don't believe in soul co contracts. I do believe in karma. And I do believe in trying to work things out on a soul level. But I don't believe that I'm in another lifetime agreeing to be with somebody. I paid 6 k and it was worth every penny. Well, I'm glad you did. I had to give in because mine was hitting $50,000 and two lawyers later and I had to give in. I literally had to give in to whatever because it wasn't going to end. So I gave in. So my divorce did not benefit me in any way at all whatsoever. But uh, that's besides the point. Um, anyway, no, I don't miss stripping. Yes, two different lawyers, four years. Yes, anything that they do, they charge you for. It's a fucking nightmare. So I just gave in. Whatever John wanted, John got. And he still argued with me about it, how it should be that way. Because after 36 years, I did nothing. He did everything. We've been through this. That's okay. You can say that all you want. The fact is I created your two sons is what I did. Out of my body, you did not. But anyway, I do believe in Jesus. And I also believe in whatever you just asked me if I believed in. But I don't really know what you did. Um... I don't believe that we would be given soul contracts and no memory of why we're involved in them. That sounds a bit fucked up, right? Johnny Depp is in the cabal. Johnny Depp is in the cabal. Johnny Depp is one of them. Don't you think? No, I haven't channeled Sylvia Brown. I call my grandkids my grandkids. They're my grandkids. Um, no kids and no married. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yes. I think Johnny Depp is one of them. I'm sorry. They're celebrity. I don't know what to say. They're not better than you. And this fucking fool ran around in movies. Very strange. And everybody goes, it's an amazing movie. Is it though? Like, are you a sociopath? Because you got to play these. Yes, Jane Fonda as well. You're not going to be... In that level of money, unless you are connected to it. That's just it. Mm -hmm. I can't see. Let's see. Mm. I'm like trying to see Johnny Depp's. Yeah, exactly. He murdered his partner at the Viper Room. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Who's telling me? Why do people go be careful? Here's the thing. Be careful. You be fucking careful. I'm allowed to have an opinion and express it. And I'm allowed to express it about a public person because they're fucking public. Okay. Okay. Stop telling me to be fucking careful. I mean, what the hell? The best thing I ever did was have my kids. Best thing I ever did was have my kids. Best thing ever. Best thing ever. Yes. De Keanu was fucking David Geffen. David Geffen's gay and David Geffen. I have to do a video on David Geffen. Mm-hmm. 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 People always go, be careful. I don't care. I want you to really hear me. The reason this world is so stupid is because people are cowards. That's why they took the shot. Oh, but I have to... But I have to pay my bills. No, you do not have to pay your bills. If you know your legal rights, it does take action. But y'all are fucking stupid, the ones who did that. And then they're like, oh, I didn't realize. Yes, you did. You chose not to because you thought if you were a good person under tyrannical reign, that you would get off and be able to keep your money. How about you get a class action lawsuit because the government does not have the right to tell you what to put in your body. If you put your kids in public school, then I guess that's run by the government. 
So don't put your kids in public school. Take the money from those fucking idiot teachers, no offense to the good ones, and do that. Take it back. Take it back from them. Yeah, so there you go. You lost your job and you will find another job. God will protect and take care of you. If you lose stuff because you didn't inject yourself with the heroin, call it what it is, then what's the problem? Let me get this straight. There's, oh, this is giving me a headache. That's the cat coming in the ha coming in this room. So let me get this straight. You have, look it, I look insane. So let me get this right. They do not have a cure for AIDS. They do not have a cure for cancer. Everybody's running around with MS. Herpes is rampant, okay? Herpes is fucking rampant. So you're going to take a vaccine after less than a year out. Hi from Burbank. You're going to take a fucking vaccine less than a year out. Is that what you're going to do? And you're going to say this is good? <laughs> they have not cured anything. They don't know what they're talking about. They want you to become a lifelong whatever. It is your choice. But for Christ's sakes, when you have a choice, don't put your choice on me. Because you will come in my wrath. Do not put your fucking choice on me. Your choice does not allow you to usurp my rights in public. Because you're a coward and afraid you're going to catch a disease and put a fake mask on your face that says on the box, does not stop the transfer of viruses. Just because you be a coward does not mean you get to tell me what to do because you a baby. Do you know, and I'm going to tell you this, do you know, and people say this to me all the time, when I say herpes, they go, but herpes doesn't transfer. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. If you wipe your hoochie with a towel, and then I go in the bathroom and wipe it on my face, and your skin cells, but you don't have an outbreak, and that goes on my face, you figure it out, okay? Okay. So yeah, half the world has fucking herpes, but they don't do shit. I know about the masks. There's just, they're, they're just, I don't even know what to say. I don't have any thoughts on Nicki Minaj. Stop asking me. There are so many people with diseases, with problems, with this, with that. It's called shedding, correct. So like... You can fucking yell at me and inject me with something. I want to know if you have herpes. Do you touch my food plate in a restaurant by not washing your hands? How do I know you really wash your hands? No, they don't give a shit about that. And they allow fentanyl in this country. Fentanyl in this country to kill your children. So now your teenagers are out there at school taking pills that look like Xanax or whatever with fentanyl in them, that your government opens the border up and says, come in, drug dealers, cartel, come the fuck in and kill the people. Come the fuck in. Come in to America right now. The borders are open. Come in. Bring your fentanyl. Bring your criminals. Kidnap those children across the border. But you American citizens... Turn around at the airport, spread your arms like a little bitch and go through the fucking radiation machine so that we can tell if you're carrying hairspray you shouldn't be carrying, you fucking fucks. No, people got to say something and I can't deal with it. I will be saying something always. And Texas is fatting, fighting. Texas is fighting back. And why would you not fight back? Why is it okay for people to come into this country when you and I, do you know I had to get a, okay, I had to get a driver's license, which we all have to get by 2025, that says, um, has my passport on it, has my green card on it, has my blah, 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 all on my new driver's license. And I had to take all that documentation in. But these fucking assholes walk across the border. And I don't care, okay? They walk across the border free willy-nilly. And what are they bringing? Are they bringing intellect? Are they bringing, yeah, the real ID, right? Well, now you just gave me a good idea because the reason these people are coming across the border, do you know why? 
Would you like to know why? I just figured it out. Do you know why? Okay. From sleeping, I'm all weird looking. The reason is once they infiltrate us, who are you? I don't vote. I don't play that game. I don't vote. I think the government needs to be removed from office legally. Okay, removed from office. And I feel the government needs to be put in a position where these people that we now know and have to vote for are not there. It's a game. It's rigged and feed us in a jar. Exactly. Of course, TSA is a fucking scam. It's a fucking scam. Of course it is. Because they got fentanyl coming through the borders, but they're worried about you carrying drugs across. Fuck off. Fuck off. And it's our government that lets the Mexican cartel come in with the Middle Eastern cartel, with the Chinese cartel, with the Indian cartel, with blah, 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 all of them. And they let them come into this country and no one says anything. No one says anything. How is that a thing? Why is that a thing? Why is that a thing? Exactly. Why are you allowed in this country? So what they're going to do is infiltrate the borders, and that's how they'll introduce Elon Musk's link in the hand. Every time I go to Whole Foods, it says pay by hand. What kind of idiot puts a chip in their hand? Are you people stupid? Like, how stupid is everybody? I don't know what to say. Yes, World War Three is possible right now. Yes, no vaccines at the border, no jobs, no paperwork, herpes, AIDS, God knows what else. And it's Texas should shut their border. Who the fuck? Just get real. Get real. Unless unless your government is willing to house these people and they are not. They're not. Yeah. Yes. Cholera or whatever you just said there. Yeah, it's on. It's on. Game on. And I don't care. You guys, the only reason I think we care as people is because we were sold a bill of goods that this was the place we're going to have our kids and you can get the American. Yes, Whole Foods has that. I was just there. No, I know it's Arabs now. I'm saying, but the Mexican cartel is here too. Come on. They're here. But they t they sell us a bill of goods. They legalize alcohol and then tell you, oh, you should be out drinking wine in the afternoon and fucking your families up because they know that. They let fentanyl in to kill little 13-year-olds that were going to take a pill, try something, and do that. I've told you I don't vote. Stop asking me. I don't vote. I don't play the voting game. I don't believe in it because I believe it's rigged and fixed. And that should be my right as American. If everybody stopped voting, we'd see that they'd still vote. I bet you smoke we smoke good weed. I don't smoke. <laughs> you must be a troll. I don't smoke weed. Um, I did when I was 15. I've not smoked since. But um, no, I smoked once. Let's see. I think I was like 21 or 22. And that's the last time. And it was hash. And that was it. I mean, really, after the age of 20, do you not grow up? Or y'all like babies? Oh, I'm going to smoke the weed because the government says I can't do it. If you realize the government wants you on drugs so that you're stupid, then you wouldn't do it, right? Right. Yeah, some people do smoke daily. But understand, they want to make you sick. Get that. Understand, they want you sick. They want you on food that makes you sick. They want you to struggle and fight. They don't want marriages to work. They want to take your kids away from you. They do all kinds of things to fuck with you. I'm smoking hash right now. <laughs> uh, they, well, you're not sick yet, but when you get to be 50, 60, 80, and then you cry because you've been smoking your whole life and your lungs shut down, that's a you problem. Don't throw that shit on me. You don't know what you're putting in your lung. Don't throw that shit on me. I shouldn't have to pay for your illness because you chose to continue to do something but yet I got to pay so much for my health insurance. It's it's totally backwards. And I don't have health insurance. Yeah, gummies is probably fine. It's probably all fine in moderation. But if you have to do it every day, it's probably not good. They do want you sick. So they do. I know. We got some trolls on here. Now I'm getting dizzy with the trolls. The trolls making me dizzy. Oh, of course it's 100% higher. Have you seen how stupid people are out there? Hello, stupid people. <laughs> Yes, El Chapo, he escaped. Like Jeffrey Epstein, these prisons. Like, I'm sorry, what? 
Yes, Mew is a cancer. Where is she? She's in my mess here. I have a hoarding little area over here. Mew is a cancer. And I think she's around July 4th. Or she could even be Meadow's birthday, July 2nd. Um, yeah, I think. Yeah, every, but see, if you're taking medicine every day, you have to understand what's happened to your body to break it down. And usually it has to do with digestion. So, yes, running does. Somebody asked me on here, <laughs> when you do a live stream, are you channeling? Um, no, I'm just blathering. Okay, so keep it straight. But, uh, yeah, anyway, channeling just means the understanding of energy that comes to you. And then speaking it in the way that you can, right? I'm a life path nine. I think it's ridiculous. How is the bear? You said beer, but I think you meant the bear. I think he's out hibernating. I think he's, I don't know what's wrong with Kate Middleton, except she probably tried to flee the royal family and then she's getting, you know, her brain. What they do is they, they, they shock the brain. So no, I fed Mew first. I fed Mew first. Honestly, I fed her. I fed her. She been fed. Um, thank you for calling me intelligent. <clears throat> yeah. I think, let's see, it's hard to keep a fine tune. Yeah, I think that they, I don't know. Anyway, more of my point was on the West Memphis Three. Stop telling me about the shoelace and the hair in the shoelace. That guy with the hair in the shoelace, which was one of his kids' shoelace, and you don't know the shoelace around Michael Moore if that was just grabbed or intentionally put or whatever, but that guy did not track down those three kids, hog tie them, and understand the knots are sigil magic. They could also be butcher's knots. And they could also be tied. But all three had different knots. And those are sigil. Okay? Sigil. I don't like any celebrities anymore. Because first of all, they're pushed in my face. 20 years ago, I didn't. I stopped going to movie theaters. My kids were little. I stopped going to movie theaters because... Um, Number one, you're not better than me and forcing your opinion through a movie is not what I wanted to do. And there were very few movies that were of any interest to me. I can only sit still for a few minutes unless it catches me. Um, so I did. There were some good movies. Yes. But, you know, I didn't. Channeling is just receiving energy from around you. And processing it. A download is when they place information in your head and you get a download of information. That's what that is. So it's different. It's just different. Um, yeah, I never saw the Barbie movie. I'm not going to watch it. I don't give a shit. I don't care. I don't care who they are. They The movies really suck all the way along. Again, go back to Jimmy Stewart, who I used to like. Go back to It's a Wonderful Life. Go back to Harvey the White Rabbit. What is the White Rabbit? What do we know about the white rabbit? It is the molecular structure, the bunny ears of adrenochrome. They've been shoving that in our fucking face. Jimmy Stewart's character where he's in a mental hospital chasing a white rabbit, Harvey, 1940 whatever, 1950 whatever, that is him chasing his high, the adrenochrome, because he's high on adrenochrome. You get it? You get what that is? Yeah, you understand what that is. I don't know what I'm wearing. It's probably Mac, but I really don't know. Um, so when you look at it, look at the movies and look what they're trying to push in your face. What are they trying to push in your face to make you follow? Remember the movie, The Crying Game? The fuck is that? Get out of my face. They want to shove everything. I know I can never stop the chat from working. Everybody's told me I've tried. I don't know. Wait, Pee Wee Herman? Yeah, Pee Wee Herman, they let around kids. And by the way, they targeted him for some reason. Psychics are going to be wrong, Anna. Psychics are people. We're just, what you're paying a Playboy White Rabbit, exactly. Thank you for that. Um, thank you for that. When you look at psychics, understand they are people. Oh, look, Mew's right there. <laughs> look, she's sitting on my shoulder. <laughs> Sorry, that just, I didn't know where she was. She's patiently staring us down. She's like, bitch, move. 
<laughs> Hi, Mew. Um, anyway, when you look at, I forget what I was going to say. Oh my God. I just forgot. I just went bananas and forgot what I was going to say. Oh, they shove people in our faces on purpose. They expect us to behave in a particular way. It's ridiculous. Yeah. The adrenochrome. Yeah. Well, it, first of all, oh, Pee Wee Herman, totally bad. Oh, psychics. Yeah. Psychics. First of all, we're people. Secondly, you're paying a psychic to interpret information in a language that is neither familiar to them or to you. So you're paying for the interpretation of the energy, okay? Yeah, there you go. You're paying for the interpretation of the energy. So it's in the interpretation and not always will you understand the interpretation. To give Sylvia Brown credit, where sometimes I don't give her credit, but if you look at her with Amanda Berry, what she said to that mother is, you will see your daughter when you die, right? Which made everybody say the daughter was dead. Well, Amanda Berry's mother died before she was released. Therefore, that's actually true, but we took it one way. So you have to understand empathically, intuitively, psychically, it's not, it, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. You do the best you can. You do the best that you can. And sometimes you don't do well. And sometimes you do do well. It just depends. All right, y'all. That's it. I thought I'd come back on and talk about the, the Memphis th the three. Because I want you to really think about it for a second. Yeah, the, the picture. Oh, yeah, that picture in front of Keith swimming. That was sent to me by a lovely person who painted me because she said Keith wanted her to paint me. And I must thank her. I'm behind on my thank you notes. Um, yeah, I want you guys to understand, though, adrenochrome is like speed. So it is like speed. And it is also like youthful for the physicality of your body. You're putting youthful energy. Blood is your life force or energy. You're putting youthful energy into your bloodstream. So you're actually stealing another person's essence for your own gain, which makes you sick in the head. Really? What are we going to do, Lou? What are we doing? <laughs> she gave me the stink eye. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, y'all. Okay, just go back and just re, I want you to listen to what they say with the Memphis Three. Then I want you to look at Damien Eccles and I want you really to look at it, okay? No, I'm never drinking blood. I don't care if I stay young. No. The way to unblock a throat chakra is to speak. That's the way to unblock it. Kitty. Kitty kitty on the table. All right, you guys. Peace out, everybody. Okay. Peter, wait, channel Peter's negative. Oh, I have to get that. I can't even read. Now I'm like, can I go back to bed? That's what I'm thinking right now. <laughs> Bye, you guys. It is. It's chaos magic and glamour magic. That's why everybody, it like gets confused with that. Bye. Bye.